Hi, welcome to Ladies of Another View, and we are here with Jan, and I'm so excited. Donna Fricky is Yay. joining us today. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> she is a guest host because we have summer hours going on here. We do. <laughs> Um, so she was kind enough to come on, and we've been wanting her to come on as a guest host for a long time, so I'm really excited that she's here with us today. And um, I just came back from Michigan, so I have to get acclimated back, Bismarck, back working again. I was visiting my 95-year-old, almost 96-year-old dad. Ooh, and he's doing well? Um, he had a medical situation. We thought he was down for the count, and he's oh. up Yay. working on his walker. Going up and down the halls, trying to get more distance in. So, yep, trying to get his steps in. Well, I hope I'm doing any distance at 96 years old. Yeah, yeah, he's doing really well. But um, it, was, it was great to see him. Hard to come back, but I do yeah. love, I, I mean, we like living in Bismarck, North Dakota, so that's good, too, and I love doing the show. So um, glad to be back, and um, we're going to start by talking about this whole door-to-door -door campaign. Um, what are they thinking? Yeah, I, I just, because I'm, well, I'm looking at the right and the left and seeing how it's being reported. And we do live in two different worlds, apparently, because there's some people saying any criticism of this door-to-door -door campaign to encourage people to get COVID vaccinations. One side is saying, well, there's misinformation. We need to give people good information. And the other side is saying, are you kidding me? Let people decide for themselves. Don't start going door to door on, on this whole situation. What do you guys think? Well, I've seen both sides of it, too, where they're saying, you know, just let them tell you what they want you to know and send them on their way. And there's other people that are saying, oh, Second Amendment, I'm going to be at the ready. You need to tell me exactly what I can say to them and what I can't. Put up no trespassing signs, the whole gamut. I, I guess I've seen it left to right and up and down. I think some people are really scared that it's one step closer to socialism. I think it's weird that people are going to come to your door. Donna, what do you think? Well, I guess I think who's going to do it, first of all. Yeah. I mean, how are they going to find the people that are going to say, oh, yeah, I'll just go up to random doors and start knocking yeah. and talk to, talking to them. And, and then if they start asking these private questions, who are you talking to? How do you know that they're the people that are really from, who are they, health, from where, what department, where are they coming yeah. from? So, you know, I think that's something too, is that people could start doing it, I don't want to give any ideas up, but start doing <laughs> it on their own, you yeah. know? And um, I always am leery about people coming door to door. You always ask, you know, if they have a card, yes. you're supposed to be registered with the state. You know, if you have any concerns, you're supposed to call them. It's mm -hmm. actually illegal to be going door to door unless you are registered with the state in North Dakota. So that's something to keep in mind too is who's and going to be And that's 50 that. states we're talking about and I don't know if they all have those laws. Now technically I understand they're not supposed to be asking questions, just offering you information. But you're right, huh. you know, who are these people? Supposedly we're going to get volunteers. Come on. <laughs> I know. But How I've many also, people? I've also seen some of the like little scripts that they've been handing out to some of these folks. And I can't say for 100% for sure that they were genuine, but it was what questions to ask folks. And, you know, it seemed to me that the whole thing was to say, are you vaccinated? Well, number one, unless I'm misunderstanding it, HIPAA says I don't have to give you my medical information, especially if you're not my doctor um, or a medical provider. So why are they... <laughs> Why are they thinking they can cross the line on some of these things? And I don't know. I don't know if they can ask that question. And so all I know is it's, it is putting pressure on, and the Biden administration has felt like they haven't. It's, it's slowed the rate of vaccinations going on right now. They want to get more people vaccinated, so they think this is a good way to do it. So I asked the question on our Facebook page, what are you going to do? This is what I put up. Well, there we go. What will you say to someone who knocks at your door and wants to know if you've gotten your shot? Do you know why I said shot? I, don't, I mean, that probably gets flagged too. Because if you say vaccinations or COVID, like we are so flagged. Every way you could possibly be flagged, Yes, we are. And here are some of the comments. We had 200 comments from people. And um, some of them were creative. 
um, like I'd start <laughs> coughing on them. <laughs> I like the first one. Vodka or scotch? <laughs> yeah, vodka or scotch. Um, answer the door with my pistol. No, I'm not recommending it. I'm, you know, I'll, I'll take theirs if they take mine. Um, that's not very nice. Well, someone but. just said, just say yes, whether you've had it or you haven't, and honestly, just send them on their way. But, you know, I, that's like people saying, well, I identify as vaccinated. But. Well, that's what my husband said, because we were kind of role playing it this morning. And he said, I'd just say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, yeah. Don't I guess it depends on if you want to play mind games. It's kind of like telemarketers when they call. Yeah. Some people have fun. Oh, yes. Or it's like, what, what shot? Yes. You know, I mean, they, they're just like, do you have a shot? Yeah. Well, okay, I had whatever when I was two years old. Yes. Yeah, those kind of vaccinations. Yeah, I got a shot then. I had a tetanus shot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I just I just think this is kind of doomed to fail. Do you really think somebody's like, oh, thank you, I'm going to go? And the whole idea is to correct what they are calling disinformation, but I'm sorry, there is information out there. It's, it hasn't been FDA approved. People have a right to make that decision, even though it seems like there's more and more pressure. And in some, some workplaces, you have to get the vaccination. Some schools, if you don't get it, you can't register. And now to have this door-to-door -door campaign because they want to make sure, you know, can't can we just make up our mind and you, people accept it, that some people don't want to get it? Did well, you see with the general surgeon? It was in the front page of the paper. I love reading the newspaper because there's things in there that you read it and then you read the whole article and go, oh, wait, on the bottom they have a disclaimer of all the things they said for like three-fourths of the article. But the United, United States is in trouble. Yes. Technically, they are. That's what they're saying. But, you know, there are lawsuits going on for, with a lot of this kind of stuff because there are doctors that are either being sued or are suing. A lot of this is just plain ending up in the courts. And, and I think that a lot of the, the, the folks that are, are taking these suits feel that they've been injured whether they've gotten a vaccination or not. Some of them are thinking that um, just the pressure of being forced to do something against their religion, against bodily autonomy, against their, what they consider their rights whether civil or first or second or whatever, um, you know, people are becoming more aware. They're waking up, they're taking res some responsibility for their own health, and they're saying, this is not for me, you can't make me do it, especially when it's, it is for thee and not for me. You know, they, the masks were a good re um, representation of that. And, and the, the information is out there. Come Absolutely. on, who doesn't have access to this information? And the Biden administration has also said that Facebook needs to do a better job about misinformation. Well, they're after us a lot on that sort of thing. I wanted to just publish a study uh, from India that shows ivermectin is having great results in treating people. And they told me that that was dangerous information and I needed to take it down and do I agree or I could risk have, losing our Facebook page. Well, I don't want to be the reason that we lose our Facebook page even though I have real issues with them and, and Biden is saying, well, you're not doing a good enough job. Since when is a private company the arm of the government to help do their deeds? Anyway, enough about there. We're gonna we're gonna take a look at what's going on with Cuba because there's just a lot of issues that are kind of right and left as usual. So we'll be right back after these messages. Ladies of another view on Beck. Respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. Calling all first responders. Join us Friday, July 30th for First Responders Night at the Bismarck Event Center. The Bucks take on the Green Bay Blizzard with a 6.05 p.m. kickoff. For more information on tickets, please visit BismarckBucks.com. Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, 
along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. I'm Rick Becker from No Apologies. Welcome to your After Hours Oasis of Sanity. How can, how can these people not see that they're just clowns? We help simplify and educate you on things going on in the legislature and around the country. Asking the hard hitting questions. But also having flea stack and Sid and Marty Croft stuff and we've talked about that sometimes. <laughs> it's bad. Watch us weeknights at 9 central on Beck News and online at beck.news. Pub 21, your one stop for fun, drinks, and food. Our spacious facility provides COVID safe fun for you and all your friends. With nightly bingo and specials, you can be sure there's something to do for everyone. If you're staying in for the night, we've got you covered just across the way with Pub 21 Liquor. We have a wide variety of options, from wine to whiskey and everything in between. Stop in today at 1014 South 12th Street in Bismarck to see what all the buzz is about. You won't be disappointed. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Beck. And we're going to talk about Cuba right now. And um, why does it relate to the United States? A number of different reasons. One is the Biden administration has not done anything to condemn their lack of free speech and the draconian measures that that country has suffered under communism. Now, we put trade embargoes and um, penalties on their country. So BLM has criticized the United States as being the problem. And it can be debated. Should, you know, did those measures with cutting back, you know, stopping, ceasing trade with them, did that hurt the people? Yes, why did we do it? Because the people are being hurt, because they aren't given their freedoms. Um, did it change anything? Well, now the people themselves are rising up and saying enough is enough. Now this is interesting, because the ambassador to Cuba at first reported that there were protests because they were not getting medicines. It was about COVID, but it, never, but it wasn't. Now, seriously, the ambassador doesn't, doesn't know what the protests were about initially? which makes you wonder, are, are, do they just not like the messages coming out? So they were trying to quiet it. Um, but what we're seeing a lot is support for the socialist government and for Castro and from socialism. BLM. From BLM and from the Democrats that belong to the Socialist Party in Congress. Um, but they're not defending the people, they're defending the government don't think you can do that. And number one, I don't think you can trust BLM. Something, um, I saw um, the little clip that we had We're going to play it in just a minute, so go ahead. But, but something they mention on that is that BLM is a global network foundation and has many divisions now. So what they are doing is they're going around and they're finding whatever it is that's bothering you, having you build a cause around it, and then they're helping support that in a negative mm -hmm. way. Yeah, and they're going to say that. I have that in there. Oh, and I, I mean, it just, it stuck with me because it, it's not just the issue anymore. They're, they're taking things and they're stretching it in a way that it's making people think that I have to choose a side. So is this all about Cuba or is it all about another way to cause division? It's constantly this anti-American side that I'm seeing. It sure seems so. I try to say America's the problem. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like, hello, wait, wait. The yeah. Cuban people are rising up, and, and there are some people like BLM saying, well, America's the problem. Yeah. Well, let, that sounds traitorous to me. Let, let's watch this clip, and then we'll have more to say. 
The people of Cuba are being punished by the U.S. government because the country has maintained its commitment to sovereignty and self-determination. Cuba has historically demonstrated solidarity with oppressed peoples of African descent from protecting black revolutionaries like Asada Shakur through granting her asylum. Shakur, also known as Joanne Chesimard, was convicted of being an accomplice in the 1973 execution-style killing of New Jersey State Trooper Werner Forster. He left behind a wife and a three-year-old son. Shakur later escaped prison and fled to Cuba, where former Fidel Castro granted her asylum. Leo, your thoughts. Let me be as clear as I can. Black Lives Matter represents no one. Black Lives Matter speaks for no one. This is an extremist organization, a Marxist organization, read his manifesto, and that's why it supports Cuba. For Cuba to protect a, a person involved in the murder of a cop is shameful. But I, what the problem is, Black Lives Matter gets too much attention in this country. It doesn't represent black people. It has done nothing for black people. And I think Black Lives Matter should be basically ignored. It is shameful and, and, and embarrassing that corporations, I don't want to mention them, NBA, Major League Baseball, uh, Coca-Cola, all allow Black Lives Matter to allow them to shake them down for money and gives them a platform to spread this hate. It's embarrassing about what Black Lives Matter does for America and for black Americans. It's horrible. They have global networks. They have domestic networks. They have public policy centers. And they are proliferating their own ideology all across the world. Then they multiply out to all these affinity groups where they take every disaffected person and they create some kind of organization around them. They're inside the schools teaching kids how to create, a, turn a moment into a mass movement. Freddie Gray, you know, in Baltimore, and Michael Brown in Ferguson, George Floyd in Minneapolis. This is happening all over the world. These are very dark networks of organizations that masquerade as social justice and charities and NGOs, and they're very, they're backed by very powerful people, and they're extremely well-funded. And that's the real question that we need to get to. Who is driving this, and why are they driving it, and what is their end state? Because these people don't really want a Marxist uh, world in the end. They just want power. They want power and control, and they're using all of us. Follow the money. What people need to keep in mind is that many people have died and been prisoners. We used to help a Cuban refugee family here, and the grandfather had been 20 years in prison as a political prisoner. And um, the late historian who was widely respected across all circles, R.J. Rummel, he tried to come up with how many, he called it democide, people that have been killed, uh, genocide at the hands of their own government. And it's hard to come up with numbers because they learned after Nazi Germany that you could be tried for crimes later on. So they really cover up and don't keep records and don't want people to know how many people were terminated. And he came up with somewhere that the death toll in Cuba under Castro was somewhere between 35,000 and 140,000 with the medium of 73,000. So I just want to put up that we put up these numbers on Facebook and, and somebody apparently complained about us. I guess that's how it can happen because last February we put this up that um, unarmed citizens, Castro murdered 100,000 unarmed citizens. So maybe... That number is, you know, R.J. Rommel came up with 35,000 to 140,000, 141,000. But anyways, we were told that, okay, now we're, we can't invite friends. We're down for a day um, because we put that information up there. So I guess you have to be careful. And I get that. Be careful of your facts. But I'm looking at historians and statisticians that are saying that many people were killed under Castro, even though the numbers are hard to come by, that we have to take a look at what's happening and treat it seriously. This is more than just free speech. It is yes. free speech, but it's your freedom and being having the right to live freely. And a lot of times they've done, um, the left media have done programs on Castro being wonderful, that he's brought education and health care to Cuba, totally ignoring the number of people that have been imprisoned and killed for that. Well, they, and they said it was only to 1987. I said, what happened between 1987 and 2021? Yeah. You know, that we don't know of. And then the, the, 
the abortions and things like that that are happening without their choice. They say without a, a parent's or choice at all because one little thing is wrong with the child, we're, we're, we're taking care of that. You know, that's just scary. It's really sad. It, it's important to keep in mind there's two million people that have left Cuba that don't live there anymore. Why? Yeah, exactly. they're desperate to, to leave. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was a Spanish, you know, the island is only 90 miles from, from the tip of Florida. That's another reason we need to be really concerned. Yes. When you think about it, that's like here to Jamestown. Yeah, exactly. Not that far away. Yeah, that's a rowboat. Yeah. And I, you, you would think we'd all be united in free speech and against uh, oppressive governments, but now, of course, not, not even that. Um, um, anyways, when we come back, we're going to be talking with somebody from Meg from the American. Oh my gosh, Family Research Council. Family Thank Research you. Council. <laughs> Donna, I knew we had you here for a reason. Thanks. So we will be talking with Meg from the Family Research Council coming up next with Ladies of Another View. I'm back. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that, there's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing, ruins the neighborhood. Come on humans, let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors, 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. Go for launch, 2018 series winner. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of My Pillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make My Pillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped My Pillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got My Pillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented my pillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. For example, you get my six piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98. Or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit mypillow.com. Ever been in a cave before? It's our first time. It's all right. Where are you going? Oh. See you at the car! But how will we... The car! Your offer has been accepted. Ever bought a house before? It's our first time. All right. Where are you going? I'll see you at the closing. But how will we... The closing! Hey everybody, I'm Doug Billings, your host of The Right Side with Doug Billings on Beck News. We bring you high profile guests, ladies and gentlemen, exclusive guests. Now, you're not gonna see these guests in most of the mainstream media outlets. Another thing that I do here is give guests a platform to speak freely. You're not gonna see me censor anybody. Please join us, won't you? Weeknights right here on Beck TV and online at beck.news. Cheers. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Beck. And I want to thank Donna for saving me. I <laughs> going through all my notes and no you know, those guest hosts there are right on it. They <laughs> they do their homework before they come in here. And we're gonna be waiting just a minute. Um, we're trying to hook up with Meg Kligganon, and she's a senior fellow with the Family Research Council. She's going to talk to us about what's happening in schools across the country. Now, we've talked about this before, um, but just the, the whole CRT, because the National Teachers Association is pushing for it all the more, even though there is a lot of backlash yet from parents, and a lot of 
parent-teacher conferences and Big time. School, t school board meetings. Um, and Donna, you were in education. Tell us a little bit about your background so everybody knows. Well, I, you know, I, I, I think about, that was a long time ago, but we <laughs> all had to take a Native American Studies class, and, and it was very interesting. Um, this is in, at UND in Grand Forks. Um, but I was always taught that every student is important no matter what. And I've taught at uh, public schools here in Bismarck and Mandan, worked with the Southwest region. I've done projects in Texas and different places around the United States. And, and so it's always interesting to get together and talk about you know, graduation rates and what are they learning and what's happening. And, and um, so, but I, I, I want to bring, it's interesting when you said that you were having this guest and I said, oh my gosh, I just found this book yesterday, Our Hopes and Dreams for a Vision for America, which I think would be a good book study by Gary Bauer. And he is the president of Family Research Council. And so that's who she's working with. And I, um, well, it says Tony Perkins now, but Gary was the starter, the be begin, beginning person. And then I went to look and see when was this book started? 1996 is when the when it was copyright. So when you think about this is not a problem that we've had or a situation in the last two years, four years, 10 years, back to 1996 and before that, these are questions of what's being taught. So one of the chapters in here is schools that teach again and really outlining what are we teaching and why are we teaching it and what's happening with our, our students and what needs to be done. And so there's not enough time to talk about all of that, but um, oh, I just opened this up always like, our children must know too the special character of the nation and they must be taught that it's good. And so that's something that's that really bothers me. And that's not happening, right? Do you well, feel? when we are told that it isn't good and we were brought up to be grateful, you know, to, to that, you know, there's always a silver lining or make lemonade out of lemons. And, and then we hear that everybody's bad, and that, oh, this is bad, and that's kind of like, why is that bad? You know, why can't I just be kind to everybody, no matter who they are? And not pretending that the bad in the past didn't happen. I know, yeah, I, 100%. I went to school a long time ago, but we learned <laughs> that. We were not You happy. learned from your mistakes. Yeah. Right, right, right. And the we, country's mistakes, or whatever else. But we let's covered move on. that, yes. But everything you need to know, you learned in kindergarten. You so, know that yeah, saying, how that, that saying goes, or the book, yeah, there's, there's a, a book, book written yeah. as well. But, you know, if you have a group of children playing on a playground and they're not instructed how to play or who to play with or who not to play with, they will include most everybody. And I say most because there are some rude children, and I've seen that happen as well because, you know, we have to be realistic. But the kids don't learn to be racist from playing with other kids. They learn it from the adults in their lives. Oh, absolutely, yeah, and we won't say that there isn't racism, and I thought we were making strides, you know, from the 60s to recently, but all of a sudden, I don't know, it seems, it almost seems like it's increasing by people trying to fix it, they're doing the wrong things, they're making, instead of bringing us together, they're creating enemies, even if you don't want to, well, as a matter of fact, Jan, we were talking about that book. Yes, um, White Fragility. White Fragility, where... You're either a, either you're a racist and you know it, or you're a racist and you don't know it, but you're yeah. a racist. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we're gonna bring we're gonna bring Meg in. Um, Meg Kliganon is a senior fellow with the Family Research Council, and thank you for joining us, Meg. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Great. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. And we were just talking about what is happening in the schools. Um, this is Jan and Donna. Donna worked in the schools for many years as a teacher. And we're concerned with the way the country is turning because at, at, well, I'll, let, I'll let you do the talking here. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, for, I'm, really, I'm really glad you're concerned. Uh, for a long time, uh, we on the right have um, been focused on issues like school choice in education, which is important and I strongly support. But a lot of times we have not been fo so focused on issues related to curriculum. And it's extremely important that we start focusing on the content of our education and not just how it is delivered. Because we learned this year 
when um, the toniest schools in Manhattan, all the expensive, really fancy schools, it turns out they're churning out little Marxists just as fast, if not faster than the public school system is. And so it's really important for us to, um, to engage in this space fully and completely and to make sure that we are doing the very best we can to give our children the best education possible. We live in the greatest country in the world, and there's no reason that our public school system cannot also be the greatest school system in the world. Meg, I'm concerned that there's a lot of backlash from parents about critical race theory, which really teaches that whites are oppressors, and it really goes at a, 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 to great lengths to teach that. And now the teachers associations are coming even stronger. The NEA, for instance, they are digging in their heels and pushing even harder to bring this into the schools. Um, they are, and um, this is a, a great opportunity for us to pay attention to what they're saying and to know that they're really not kidding. Um, they are not doing this because of um, out of malice or anything else. They honestly believe that we have a problem with systemic racism in our country, and they honestly believe that they are helping people when they talk about these issues. And so it's important for us to realize that. This is a question of worldview. They do not share our worldview and our view of what is America and what is great about this country. They do not understand that to separate children by race by calling one set of people oppressors and the other set of people oppressed, that this offends everyone equally, right? No matter which side you're on. And that's why this issue is a little bit different from, the, from issues like gender identity or sex education. There is a little bit more debate around those topics. And so while I'm very concerned about those things, not everyone in my community shares those views. But when it comes to the issue of race and this issue of critical race theory, we see that pretty much um, everyone is made an enemy in this situation. And it's really great to see parents reacting to that situation and standing up for children. So not everyone is a parent with children in the school system anymore. So how do we engage those who are, have either aged out, you know, I'm a grandparent, um, or those who don't have kids yet, who just kind of seem to be a little bit too apathetic? How can we explain to them that this is super important? It, um, it is super important, and I am really happy to see a lot of grandparents have noticed uh, who are who are you know taking care of kids sometimes during the day and maybe they were the ones uh, doing school online with children. They've noticed that there's a problem and they're willing to speak up. Schools matter to everybody in America. We base home values on in a lot of cases the quality of schools in that zip code. Businesses relocate to states based on the quality of the education and their prospects for having an educated and a competent workforce. And these are just two of the many reasons why everyone should be concerned about education. Never mind the fact that having wonderful schools is a, you know, a matter of honoring the human dignity in every person. Thank you, Meg. We're gonna take a break here. When we come back, I wanna talk a little bit about some, some of the gender ideology that's getting complicated in the school system and how parents can get involved. So we'll be right back with Meg with the Family Research Council with Ladies of Another View on Beck. Since opening in Hebron in 1940, Dakota Community Bank and Trust has been your hometown bank. Our mission has been to provide modern banking convenience with old-fashioned hometown service. We've grown with the communities we serve. Through year-round events, countless sponsorships, and nearly 7,000 hours of volunteering each year. Learn more about our 80-year history at dakotacommunitybank.com. Hop in the rig and go down the road with me. We'll cover local and national stories that impact you. Down the road with Joel Heitkamp weekdays at 530 Central on Beck News and online at beck.news.
respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's Best Contractors, 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. Hello, I'm Mike Vendell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented my pillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. Go to MyPillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you can get my premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back, and we are once again joined with Meg Kliganon, who is a senior fellow with the Family Research Council. And I want to say, if you want to get more information, go to frc.org. How easy is that, right? frc.org. And we're going to talk during this segment about what is going on with gender ideologies in the schools. That's gotten real complicated, right? It, it has. And, um, you know, in, in 2016, the um, Obama Department of Education put out a dear colleague that expanded the interpretation of Title IX to include sexual orientation and gender identity. And so that was essentially making up law out of whole cloth. There was no um, court precedent for that. It was just their opinion about what sex meant. And of course, we know that sex means uh, male or female, um, and that Title IX was designed to ensure the rights to equal opportunities for women in schools. So when that gets conflated with sexual orientation and gender identity or gender identity, that means that women and girls lose rights. So it's very concerning to see that after a little bit of a break in the Trump administration, we have the Biden administration coming right back again and even moving even more quickly and more expansively. There's a notice of intent that has come out, a notice of interpretation that has come out from the Office of Civil Rights this time, stating that we they believe that sex is means is includes sexual orientation and gender identity. So when we say that rights will be um, you know, litigated on the basis of sex is the phrase. They think that that means sexual orientation and gender identity as well. So um, there was recently a letter that was written by 17 attorneys general across the country that took issue with this notice of intent interpretation from the Department of Education. And um, I believe that we have that posted on our website at frc.org for people to see. But if you, we know that the American Civil Liberties Union in a lot of states, the state affiliates are sending letters to uh, superintendents of schools and to school board members. And they're saying, okay, the Office of Civil Rights has made it clear that sexual orientation and gender identity are included in Title IX. So you have to make policies based on that. And guess what? If you don't, we're going to sue you. 
So I think it's important for school board members who are not inclined to go along with this kind of bullying and who are going to honor the dignity of the human person and, and um, you know, honor the fact that we are made male or female based on our chromosomes. Um, the science supports this binary nature of human sexuality. There is no such thing as bi non-binary or gender fluid sexuality. This is not something that we can create in the law uh, because it just opens a huge Pandora's box of problems. And it, it denies students their rights based on actual biological sex. So if you're a school board member and you're in a position to where you're getting bullied this way by outside groups like the ACLU or the National Association of School Boards or what have you, you can point to this letter from the attorneys general and say, no, I think we're going to wait. We're going to take a pause because the, 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 this is not clear that we need to do this. We have policies right now that ensure the rights of all our students, and we're not going to go forward and make, make erroneous policy based on a misinterpretation of Title IX. Well, that's good news. Um, it, locally, the parents need to keep putting the pressure on the school board, step up and run for some of those positions. Um, yes. It's, you know, we have a local group here in, in our state um, called Let's, Let Parents Decide That, meaning that the parents should have the right to decide what's best for their children. How do you think we lost that control? What is it that we gave to our government that gave them this blanket authority over how we raise our children and educate them? Well, I, I think that we have been a little too trusting for too many years about the folks that are in this educational space because when you are a parent and you go to your, send your kindergartner off to school, the attitude from the teachers and the administration is, okay, mom and dad, we're the educational experts and we've got it from here. You can relax. We're going to make sure everything is fine for your child. And, and I, I think we've been too trusting when we've, um, you know, gone along with that, <laughs> with that um, message that they are the educational experts and parents don't have as much to say. We are responsible for the education of our children and we can delegate that authority but the um, responsibility still lies with us. And so we have to make sure that those to whom we delegate the authority do the right thing and that they do not, um, you know, it's a public school. We're not going to get everything we want all the time, right? But our children should be able to be there unmolested spiritually, physically, <laughs> intellectually, right? Our ch every, every child should be in that space and be able to be educated and, and the, the dignity of their human person honored. Now, I'm so concerned for our country because it almost seems like we're at such different ends of the spectrum. And what you just said, the, um, the left might say against us, and you look at these kids who are confused about their gender in school, and we don't want to hurt them. And it's often portrayed as we don't care about them. The parents are just trying to keep them alive. You need to respect and honor who they think they are. And do you see, like, what's the solution here? Do we need to have different schools that think differently? Because it does seem that we're so far apart. Well, I think that um, there are, you know, in, in Arkansas, for example, there's the SAFE Act that was just passed that bans medical treatments for minors based on their gender identity. I think we need to have more uh, state legislatures taking up legislation like that. Um, there certainly is no reason not to take a pause when a child is expressing this anxiety over gender identity. A lot of times they are coached online to include with their expression of anxiety, a threat of suicide that if we don't honor the person who thinks that they need to change sex, which by the way, we know is impossible, you cannot change your sex. You're, you are stuck with the parts that you have, right? And you can, adults can make other decisions, but 
your body is integrated into your into your person. It's not separate from who you are emotionally, spiritually, or mentally. And so we know that even if you're having anxiety <clears throat> around what sex you are, you simply cannot change that. So it would be a much easier task to align the mind with the body rather than the body with the mind. And the fact that that is not what's informing quote unquote best practices in public schools is very disturbing. So this is something that parents need to speak into. You need to talk to your school board. You need to talk to your teachers. You need to talk to your state legislatures. You need to even talk to your doctor at the doctor's office who may be referring kids out for endocrinology treatments that, that, that we know are just the road to suffering and dissatisfaction. So this, we, we really do have to stand up and say to this, absolutely not. <laughs> this is just simply not okay. Because if, some, if somebody goes to your website, and you can get more information if somebody goes to your website, right? FRC.org and maybe some coaching, coaching on running for school board. We have some great resources on running for school board. We have some great resources on sex ed in schools, uh, gender identity in schools. There's a lot of there's a lot of material out there happily, um, in, in not just on our site. Although we'd love it for you to come to our site, but there is information too from more local groups like um, Rethinking Identity Medical Ethics or the Society for Evidence Based Medicine. Um, those are very much moderate to left of center organizations who do also know that you cannot check. So sometimes when you're dealing with a liberal school board, you need to use something that they can hear. It might not be from our perspective. Well, I hope everybody watching takes a look at their website, frc.org, to learn more information. Thank you, Mag, for joining us today, and thank you for all your good work. Um, thank you for having me. Really, really happy to be here. And thank you for what you're doing to spread the word. It's important. Thanks. We'll be right back, continuing to spread the word, but we're going to go to the lighter side after today. We could use it, right? With Ladies of Another View on Beck. Respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. Deciding how to promote your business can be hard. Visit the professionals at Dakota Promotions and Printing and let them help you through your struggle. Dakota Promotions provides promotional items and apparel from corporate gifts to team shirts and everything in between. With quick turnaround times and friendly service, they are your best choice. And best yet, you're shopping local. Visit them online at dakotapromo.com or stop in their showroom at 320 West Main in Mandan. Dakota Promotions, delivering promotions just for you. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water. The key ingredient to making our signature New York style pizza. We also feature Hero's with the region's only Hero meat spit. Plus, Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14 inch or our special giant 20 inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. Calling all first responders. Join us Friday, July 30th for First Responders Night at the Bismarck Event Center. The Bucks take on the Green Bay Blizzard with a 6.05 p.m. kickoff and will highlight those who serve and protect our communities. For more information on tickets, please visit BismarckBucks.com. Get your free general admission tickets today. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. 
Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Arrow Service Team does it all. I'm Rick Becker from No Apologies. Welcome to your After Hours Oasis of Sanity. How can, how can these people not see that they're just clowns? We help simplify and educate you on things going on in the legislature and around the country. Asking the hard-hitting questions. But also having Flea Stack and Sid and Marty Croft stuff, and we've talked about that sometimes. <laughs> it's bad. Watch us weeknights at 9 Central on Beck News and online at beck.news. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back. This is the lighter side, but you know, Jan, you might not like this one. I'm. <laughs> do, okay. do you have Do you ever fear of heights? Big time. I'm, I'm getting better, actually, as I get older. I, as really? a kid, I climbed trees all the time. You know, could sway at the top, yeah. not a problem. Um, and then as an adult, it was like my family tried to take me out uh, at, the, what's the name of the place? It's like the Seattle Tower in, down in Las the Vegas. The Needle or yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's like the okay. Space Needle, whatever it's called. And I had to plant myself against yeah. the wall and hang on. And they, they're like, oh, come on. Yeah, and, I think, and I sat yeah. down. I mean, I was petrified. Oh. I could not move. I do the same thing, tears. and I think I think you should do it. You never know when a building might tip over, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Jump! No. What about you, Donna? Do you have any fear of heights? Oh, um, you know, you get that weird feeling, like in your tummy or your gut or whatever. But I kind of maybe I get a thrill. I mean, it feels kind of cool to be up somewhere and look all over the place or to see different things. And it's it is a trust issue. You yes. know, you just really have to like, okay, it's all right. You know, it's like some people can't be on a plane. And they, they think, oh, my gosh, how does that plane fly? So sometimes you just have to have a trust and not think about it too much. Just do it. it. There's also a part of your brain. I watched this movie once on this cliff climber, and I don't remember his name or the name of the movie, sorry. But it was, you can't believe what he would just climb these sheer Ugh. cliffs. Yeah. And... And they did an MRI on his brain, and there's a part of his brain that's not activating in our brain. Maybe for some people it's hyperactivating. <laughs> but, okay, so if yeah. you have a fear of heights, take a deep breath, hold on to the <laughs> arms of your chair, and take a look at this. Jan, come on. <laughs> now, come on. This is for you. Part of your therapy is you can at least watch it on a screen. That was the top of the Sears Tower, which is the tallest building in Chicago. It was the tallest building in the United States. I don't know if it still is. Um, he has a selfie stick, okay. and he's doing maintenance on the top of the tower. What, oh, what my gosh. What maintenance does that tower need? doesn't need people to be on the outside. They're washing windows or something. No. <laughs> Even if you're strapped in. Oh, well, Jan, what would happen to us if we had to go there and we were strapped in so nothing could happen to us, but we were up there? Oh, I don't know. That I, just makes my butt pucker. No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, oh. And the name of the movie I found out is Free Solo. I was telling you about I just found it fascinating. The, the climbing, the sheer cliffs that this guy does, and he's famous for it. Um, if, you're, if you want to ever take a look, it's called Free Solo. Hans, I'm sorry, I don't have his last name. Um, but it's amazing that some people can do that sort of thing and other people can't even watch it. Yeah, my brother and I went to, we were on the way from Boise down to Arizona and stopped at the park. Oh, in, no. It's the southern part of Utah. And everybody is like the cliff hangers and they climb and then they sleep overnight and up there. And yeah, so that's their, it was just amazing how many were along there. But yeah, Okay, I got it. Can I tell you about what I ate last week? Okay. We, we have the skyscraper of the prairie. Yes, we What's do. That? Here in Bismarck, the yep. state capital. Yep, North Dakota state capital. So my uh, family was here from Texas, so I said, let's go to the capital. And, and then uh, we went up to the top floor at the officer's base and deck. 
if you haven't been there, do it. it yeah, is, oh, absolutely, yes. yes. Totally amazing. Yeah. And you can see all four directions forever. So you can see the river meandering. We saw a plane coming in, and it's so beautiful and green, and you can see forever. So, and what you see is beautiful nature and everything that there is. And, and you can see why, too, that Bismarck has so many contours and everything as you're up there. And the challenge is find your home. You know, find yeah, your absolutely. house. <laughs> I, it's yeah, hard to I, tell from the top. I can't tell. My, yeah, I go up there with Mark, and he knows where everything is. I cannot tell from the top of buildings what is what. But that is so much fun. And if, yep. we used to take the kids up there all the time. Mm -hmm. And if you have very active children, take the steps. Yeah, no, <laughs> oh, yes. No doubt. Not all the way down, though, because they'll jump, jump them. Yeah. That's what we used to do. We, we did used to. Steps. Yeah, they would have like a contest. <laughs> yes. So I'm not recommending it necessarily, oh. but it's good exercise anyways, 19 floors yeah. up. But, um, you know, I'll tell you, I am, I am kind of afraid of heights, and I jumped out of a plane once. I parachuted by myself. Oh. And ah, my yeah. first day on the show, when we, I said I felt like I was jumping out of that plane again, really like, here we go. Oh. Um, and I thought, I'm just going to overcome this. My mom was afraid of everything, and I thought, I'm going to, I always didn't want to be afraid of anything, and I actually did jump out of a plane, and I, and I wasn't attached to anybody. I had to push myself in the door because the wind was blowing and go. I can't even imagine. I, Ferris wheels make me nervous now. So I don't know what happens. I think sometimes you can grow into a fear mm -hmm. of heights. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Yeah. I, I would never do it now. Yeah, and if you ever go to... I think it's Animal Kingdom, and you get to the Avatar ride. I got to do that not only once, but twice. Okay. And it was so amazing. Okay, so. Donna is not afraid of heights, and we <laughs> apologize to anybody who is for putting that yeah. video up there. But anyways, yeah. um, Down the Road with Joel is coming up next, and we will see you tomorrow with Ladies of Another View on Back.